Hold up. Nobody's going to give you their money. Yes, nobody's going to give you their money except they have confidence in your products and in you. And this is just the video you need to develop the right behavior, attitude, and mental fortitude to be able to attract buying customers every other day. And this is something that I know will help. I'm going to give you three secrets that I discovered that worked for me and I'm still working on. And I'm going to give you seven ways you can develop your own secret weapon, your strategies of killing it every time, making your sales count and making sure that there is return on investment, your time, your resources, your life, because your life is ebbing away as you're trying to do this business. So you need to hit the ground running. See, growing up, not having the right mentors, the right role models to learn business from can be challenging. And in today's age where it looks like everybody's doing some sort of business or the rest, but just few are getting by. You have to stand out. And in standing out, you have to make sure you understand a few of these things I'm going to mention. Number one, know your service or your product. This thing that you are selling, this company you have started, this freelance service you want to provide. Do you understand what it is about? Do you know it's like the back of your arm, like this product in and out? Who needs it? What components are there? What it can help somebody to do? What your customer stands again? When it can expire? How you should use it? What and what you should apply it with? All of that. You need to know your product and your service. You need to know it so well because we are human beings and we perceive things from even things people are not saying. If you're not confident and you don't have enough knowledge about what you're selling, people will perceive it from interacting with you and it will cause a buying barrier. And you don't want that to happen. So you need to get to know your product. If you're selling a product that you are a middleman, it even calls for more knowledge. You need to sit down and understand the ins and outs of this thing that you want to sell. Before you start complaining that nobody wants to buy, it's hard, it's all of that, understand the price point. Why was it priced at a particular level? Who and who decided on that and why? You need to understand your product like your first name. The second thing I think you need to pay attention to before we go into the seven strategies you need to employ is that move your mind from I am selling something to I am providing solution that people need. If you, if you listen to my previous video before this one, you would have heard a bit of this. Focus on the value that your product or your service gives the end consumer or gives to the buyer. That's so key. Stop thinking I'm selling something to make money. Then you to make you start feeling like, oh, I'm trying to get some bucks from people. You, you are on a mission to make sure that nobody is suffering what you have solutions already for. You are all out for humanity. Your product is all out for humanity. It brings so much value to the right people. And this has a way of shifting your perspective also that you are not called for everybody. Now, you can't become a marketing whiskey overnight. You have to go ahead and start practicing talking about your business, how you gist it, make it a gist. Start with your family members, start telling them about this product, this service that you offer. Use them to practice. Come on social media, see, stop feeling anyhow. Go on live, talk about what you are selling. You will keep improving how your presentations come off and how convincing you sound as you practice. See, even that video you're going to do first to test run, you'll be shocked somebody's going to buy from you. Stop waiting. Stop sitting on money. Now let's get into the seven strategies that will help you to sell out all the time and attract the right audience. I've given you three tools already. Practice. Understand the value your product or your service brings. Know and understand this product and service. Understand it in and out. These strategies, number four and five, did a number on me. Like I was blown away by, by them. But you want to stay to the end to get all strategies and get to work. Number one thing you need to do if you want to develop that whole fearless, shameless marketing attitude that will help you sell out every time, everywhere, anywhere you find yourself in the world and help you 
help more people because it's at the point your business begins to make more money that you can employ more people that you can expand your product line or services that you can get into seven more countries people with other languages and you can really 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 impact the world remember you said you want to change the world but you're going to change the world starting from you okay so let's go number one thing you must do if you're really really serious because yes People come to YouTube all the time, watch a ton of videos, go away, and they don't implement. I am not one of those coaches. I am not. It gives me headache. <laughs> it gives me headache, really. I needed to implement all of this, or some of them, okay? First, understand who your target market is. Market means who are the human beings that exactly needs your product or service. This is so key because this is a point of frustration for a lot of people. So you come on social media, you're marketing to everybody. You're not even calling out the specific people that your products are for. And you're hoping that buy and buy, you know, even other people that may not need it will buy. No, it doesn't work that way. Even though, yes, they can buy, but you need to be laser focused on your target market, on the people who your solution is, is going to solve their pain points. Those are people who will buy from you. People who... First of all, your solution is your pain point and your pricing is something that they can afford without the blink of an eye. Those are the people to target. Narrow down your marketing to these people. So frustrating yourself. When you sit down on paper, think about who is the person, the most ideal person who's my, who my solution or my product or my service will cater to. Write them down. Who are they? What do they earn? Where do they live? What kind of taste do they have? What would they like me to add to this product to make it really wow them? Sit down and zero in on that person. I know people talk about this a lot and it's not a cliche. It's for real. This changed my whole mindset. And I learned it in 2019, nine years into my business. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I'm telling you. Zero in on who exactly your target audience are. It doesn't matter what other people are saying or doing or also have. You know why it's important? Because it will help your messaging. When you're putting out your advert, your billboard, your social media posts, you are talking directly to them. You're using their language. My coach, Stephanie Obi, taught me, go out there, listen to how they talk about the problem they are having that you have a solution to. Look at how they say it and coin your solution in that same language. So if they're saying, oh my gosh, if I can find somebody to help me grow my Instagram followers, I'll really be happy. Then let your solution be how to grow social media followers. Don't go and say how to 10x. <laughs> you know what I mean? How to 10x your growth on Instagram. Now, nah, nobody's trying to 10x their product in that sense. No shade to whoever is using 10x or 2x or 3x. Okay? Listen to your target audience. Very important. You have to know them. You know who they are, how they speak, how they complain about the frustration they are having, which you have a solution to. Number two, the content you are posting, you're creating, whether videos, posts, word of mouth, gist, outings, speaking engagement, you must make sure that it is talking about the solutions that your product or service is going to give these people. How is going to save them from years of frustration or pain or loss of money? You have to make sure you're, you're see, wait, let me tell you, your content has to be suiting. You know what I mean? It has to be like, you know, like painkillers to pain. It has to be like yam with, with palm oil original palm oil. It has to be smooth. It has to be immersive. It has to touch them. It has to push them to action. Don't just write anything. Don't just, just put anything out there. Yes, let your content speak to their pain. Let them see the benefit. Let them see the, what is the need for me? Oh my gosh, this is what exactly I need. This will remove stress from me. This will solve this problem I'm currently having. Oh, this will give me more time to do what I'm supposed to do. Let them see it in the content and how you say it. The number three strategy you need to develop. See, you need the right relationships. Stop being a loner. Yes, that you do the business indoors or at home doesn't mean anything. Build the right relationships online, offline, and be quick to move your online good friends, supporters, to put a face on them. Put, bring them real life. 
bring them, see them face to face, travel because of them to finally put a face to them. Ah, and I used to be guilty of this as well. And of course, I'm still guilty of it because I mean, we are still online, you know, marketing. There are several human beings who are so yummy, supportive over the years that at the end of the year, because you don't live in the same country, you haven't put a face to them for real. I remember when my friend Lisa L. Flowers came to Nigeria. She had to come to Nigeria for me to put a face to her, but I haven't been into her country. But what I mean is, make sure that you build relationships. People who help you, who help you show your posts, who advise you. Don't leave them behind when it's time to expand. Make sure that you also do stuff for them. Also reciprocate your, the support that they give you. Don't be a loner. Don't be a lone ranger. Have people that you test, that test run yourself, that you, that you interact with. How is this? Does this solve the problem? Do you think there's something I should add? What do you think about this online course? Is the price point okay? Or should we lower the cost or increase it? Do you think, that, you know, do you understand? And it's also good to use that strategy to also build a relationship with people who are going to be your prospective clients. Build a relationship with them up front. So that when you have a solution, it becomes easy for them to say, oh, 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 really, oh, really, thank you for thinking about us. These people will pay you and still thank you. See, people pay me and still send me gifts. Oh, gosh, you don't understand. Just yesterday, something happened. Let me even tell you. I have a client who lives in Norway. He's Nigerian, though. And uh, he's not my editing book client. He's my relationship and and therapy client. Okay. So I helped him solve a problem, a nagging problem in you know three years ago. And today he's enjoying his life. That part of his life is working awesome and all that. So recently, some weeks ago, two weeks ago, he got to me and like, oh, I needed to do, also do this for somebody I know, somebody very dear to me. And I said, oh, okay, cool. We talked about my course and all that. He wanted to know the course so that he could actually get the lady to speak to me and then we could take it off from there. But I didn't hear from him for one week, two weeks. And then just yesterday, he popped up and like, oh, coach, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Um, the lady actually doesn't, you know, is not open to talking to anyone around. He's not open to therapy and counseling yet. So I just felt like no problem, but I'm going to send you something. And I'm like, oh, thanks for the gesture. You know, I just said it into the chat. I got a, an alert and I was like, oh my gosh. You know what he said? He said, thank you for helping me over the years. Even though this is not working, let me just give you something for your data. But it's not just data money, it's big, just big money. And I'm like, God, I, you know, and I was just feeling all, you know, was it, you know, from yesterday. No, don't beg me for money. <laughs> because on my birthday as well, I had surprises, cash prizes. I also got a cash back. <sighs> Should I be sending you all of this? Yes, I've been getting more of cash, um, cash rewards, you know, recently. So that yesterday made me feel like, oh my gosh, what's happening? God, bring it on. I'm your baby girl and I know and I need it. <laughs> You know, I'm just giving an example, but for real, that's, you know, I'm not giving you a fake story now. This happened for real, okay? And, you know, it comes back to building relationships, right? Build the right relationships. See, all the people, whether you're family members or not, who don't believe in your craft, you don't need to tell them what you're doing. Stop allowing negative energy into your boat. It, it, when your boat starts leaking, you, you will sink. Okay, that's that journey will not happen because your boat your boat can't even take it like that. You know, just look at that illustration in that sense. And people who really get you, who whoever they are, internet friends, whatever, keep them close. Okay, and use them to test run to to make sure that your product is ready to go. Okay, number four, this one. When I first said it, then I was like, okay, how everybody does it? That is testimonials, leverage social proof. Leverage using people's testimony. See, oh gosh, I remember. Then I would just, you know, put out a course or a program, and then people would say, "Oh my God, this helped me. This is what I did, and all that." I won't even screenshot them to keep. I won't even really bother. But you know, after I attended a course in, I think, twenty twenty or so, I said, "Okay, let me put out some of the testimonial from people." Like, and man, people paid like on the same post. Started making inquiries. Some people paid for the course, and I'm like. Oh my gosh, what have you been doing to yourself? See, I know on the internet is crazy. People are stealing people's testimonials. People are using ChatGP to generate testimonials and putting as theirs. Don't do that. You are ethical. Don't do that. For real, for real. People who have used your products, who have drank your parfait, people who like your snacks, people who like who who, who whose life changed in one way or the other. 
you know, get to them, ask them how they feel. Don't make it monotonous so that they don't begin to lie or try to help, you know, try to make you feel good. Just tell them, how, how has it been so far after this course, after using this? What will you say about the product? They will, one or two of them will, will give you testimonials. Use that, right? Use that for real. Use it on your website. Use it on your marketing materials. Very, very, very important. I learned this one the hard way. Now, this other one is another one that blew my mind. Like, I use, you know how you know people do stuff, but you you don't really pay attention to your like, is it effective? It's so effective. And see, the testimonials will work a lot when you're selling a high ticket product or service, something expensive. People who want, who can buy from you, they want social proof. They want to know that, oh, okay, I know somebody who used it, who recommended it. You know how word of mouth travels really far. People don't tell people, oh, this is who bagged my hair. And they go there and bab. They don't start saying, let me look at the reviews online. Let me know who is no that's the way it works social proof is so powerful don't look down on it the next one is, is another one that changed my business game um, if you watch my last video i was talking about how that i used to have this cold feet to market and i'm still dealing with it guys right but this one was something i had to understand in my reflection that when people say they don't they don't want to buy your product or when people inquire about your product then they, they don't finally buy or it doesn't mean that they hate you it doesn't mean like Stop taking things personal. Your product or your service or your company is different from you. Right? So that you don't make enemies for yourself or nothing. People can be your friends and genuinely don't need what you are providing or have a better vendor for that same product. And it's fine. Allow them to come around by themselves. Don't take things personal. Yes, your friends, your family are supposed to support you, but not all the time. They are refusing to buy your product. They are not refusing you. You're not a bad person just because they didn't buy from you. I learned this the hard way. Please don't make the same mistake. You can have friends who do not patronize you because they might not need your product or they might not need it then. They can come around later, right? So develop that whole when they say no is an answer. When they say yes is an answer. Okay, and somebody who says no today can say yes tomorrow. So you don't go and break the bridge or how they call it, bond the bridge. And then the person who is you are supposed to convert after a while, maybe when they get disappointed by their, by their normal vendor, they will come over. You'll not build a relationship in a way that when that vendor disappoints you, they'll look for another vendor altogether because you are no longer in talking terms with them. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> another strategy that is so awesome. Learn from the feedback people give you. When people say, oh, I think you should have put a little more pepper in this recipe, take it as advice. Don't feel bad. Like, oh, oh my God. Do you know, because some, some people used to come and complain about, about pepper and we decided to remove pepper. Now you're saying... Ah, ah. <laughs> Why don't you come up with a pepper recipe of that same product or that same um, stuff? Let the person come next time. I show the person immediately that, oh, right, we got you. Are you going to come tomorrow because I'm going to prepare just that for you? Prepare that for somebody like them and people that will like that. It's an opportunity to increase your product line. Mm -hmm. So you see that most of these things are attitude, attitude. <laughs> most of these things are attitude now. Attitude. Jesus is Lord. Attitude now. Attitude. Attitude now. Attitude now. Hey, God, English. Anyway, but you know what I mean? So it's something that you have to develop. That's why I said develop. You need to develop it. You might not get it right the first time, but these are things you must do. The final one, remember that the same challenges you're facing in your business, every business owner, Dangote, Elon Musk, um, whoever, who is this richest man in Asia that the, what, the child just got married? Anyway, I can't remember the name, but all of them, before they're able to build those empires that you see, they are still going through these challenges that you're currently facing. See, it's not just you. Yes, you know that you have company. Business is work. Business is not easy. Marketing is also not, and it is not something that comes easy for everyone. And that's fine, but it must be done. And you can practice and become very good at it. And that's where your wealth lies. People need to know that this your product exists before they can even decide to patronize it. So when you don't talk about it enough, they will go give the money to your competitor. And who is to be blamed? <laughs> and it shouldn't be you, okay? So as I'm changing my marketing game, I needed to change your marketing game. Let me tell you what I'm doing. 
I used to have a website for my company logo studies. Meanwhile, logo studies is the major sponsor of this channel. If you don't know, I after 2017, 2018, it went offline, and I didn't want to pay for the domain anymore. I lost enthusiasm and all of that. I don't know. Started focusing on my blog business and all that. Do you know I'm going to get back? I've already designed a website. I did it by myself. I designed a website. I'm coming back fully. My marketing game is changing. And this is not break and quench, break and quench. I'm not, there's something else that is happening to me. I listened to something just this morning, a podcast. And I just told myself, geez, this can be a pattern. You know, you can have a pattern of failed businesses or not running a big business just because you saw other people around you do business in a small way too. I told myself, I'm not going to do small business anymore. So if you're coming, Team Money Gang, let's do this together. Okay? All right. So watch out for my next video. I'll see your girl. She's so... Auntie, I come your way again. Keep being fantastic and let's get to work. Okay?